I wanted to make sure that you know that you can subscribe to get all of the videos that I make and also that you can uh, like the video if you like the video. Thanks so much for tuning in and let's get to it. Reigniting a sense of humility. In the opening of the chapter, she says, as you learn to set the ego aside, you will find that your dreams become bigger and your steps to achieve them become more humble. Ironically, it is when we act from a place of humility that we become larger. It is when we stop trying to be perfect that we start to make strides. It is when we are willing to ask for help that we move ahead and paradoxically inspire others with our strength. I can remember when I was going through a really rough patch in my life back in the late 1990s, and a friend of mine, a very dear friend who is a friend to this day, said to me, asking for help is not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. And I've come to believe that's true. I think we don't allow ourselves to be vulnerable and to appear weak, mostly because we're scared of how people will perceive us after that. In this time of pandemic and quarantine, we're learning how to live life differently. And because we're all learning together, we're all neophytes. There are only a handful of people who really understand what it's like to survive in isolation. It does require that we be more intentional about asking and set aside our ego for the time being in order to make ourselves vulnerable to ask for help. She says in the section titled Humility, Masters began as beginners, and their willingness to risk appearing foolish is a form of courage that is often invisible. I spoke about this at one other point when I compared Stephen King to his younger self and that he wasn't always a great novelist. He started out as a goofy kid in junior high writing stories in his notebook. I think what we have is this comparison disease. If I am the age that I am, which right now is 57, and I look at someone who is 27, who is far more skilled in something I'm interested in, say watercolor, I could reach out to my nephew, uh, who is a fantastic artist, amazing artist, and yet he's all of, I think, 27 or 28 years old. I could re reach out to him and say, hey, Austin, would you be willing to teach me a thing or two about painting? In fact, I'm going to do that right now. Hi, Austin. Hi, Aunt Sally. <laughs> I'm so glad to Wait, see is you. Is it a secret that we're related? Or? No, I already said my nephew, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I said I was going to call my nephew, and so here I am calling you. What would I do if I had to ask advice from someone younger than I am who is clearly way more skilled? What would you tell someone about how to get started painting if they had never painted before. Painting can be really intimidating when you're just starting out. There's a lot of like material commitment. You have to like buy a bunch of stuff and get started. But all of these like artist grade pigments and stuff like that are really just tools. The best way to start to paint is to really kind of work yourself up from like a limited palette. Um, you don't need every color in the box. As you begin to paint, what's important is it the tools you're using, it's more showing up actually doing it, which I think is the hurdle for a lot of people. They want to have the experience of painting, but it, it's a craft like any other. And, you know, you know, with it comes frustrating moments, tedious moments, and, and kind of navigating that tedium is like 75% of painting. It has these really just rewarding, amazing moments as well. Know that it's not always going to be fun. And some of the time it's about just showing up and doing it. And if you are like, whoa, that doesn't sound like it's for me. And you're just like wanting to do like, oh, I want to paint on a Sunday afternoon. Then that's totally fine too. Like that's like, it doesn't have to be this like lifetime commitment that it's imagined to be. And I, you can pretty much start it whenever you want. Cool. So you're saying you can paint poorly and still enjoy it? Yeah, it's, 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 um, Painting is a lot of things to a lot of different people. And I think having kind of a flexible view of what you want out of painting and the act of painting 
is really important. And, and if you are sitting down and loving every moment of it, that's fantastic. If you are sitting down and loving like 10% of it, that, that, that is a little hard to deal with, but it's also kind of part of it, you know? Like I think to some extent, you really wanna be able to manage that and look for those moments that you do enjoy. And if, if, if that doesn't sound like appealing, like you should still try it out because you, you may find something in it. Like I don't want to scare people off of it. Everybody should try painting. Just don't expect it to be like always rewarding and always fun. Well, um, for instance, you'll see behind me these two lovely paintings that George and I did at a, uh, where you drink and paint at the same time. Yeah, those, those are nice. Those are good. <laughs> They're the same. We had a, a lot of fun good. making those too. We did. We had a great time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I guess what I'm trying to express is that there's not really a point at which you have to start painting to get to some level where there's like some secret that you find. I think the secret that you find is, you know, painting can be work like any other type of work, but it can also be one of the most fun and exciting experiences you can have. And the big secret is you just got to show up and do it. And you probably practice almost every day. I bet you do. I try to get in the studio a lot. I'm, I won't say I hit it every day, but... Is that um, where you are here in the studio right now? Yeah. Uh, so these are some current paintings I'm working on. My current situation, I'm renting. It's all temporary. What I've done is I've tap conned some um, chipboard onto the walls. I like to work from canvas that's like loosely stapled to the wall. Okay. And then I can stretch it after the fact. There's a couple of reasons I like doing that. One is it allows me to kind of maintain tension in my stretcher, stretching of the canvas. If you are, you know, dabbing paint on a surface that's stretched, it's a little bit like beating on the drum and eventually the drum will kind of get looser. Yeah. And by doing all of that beforehand, it stays a little bit tight longer. It also means I can kind of have like some like final cropping kind of decision-making power at the end. And I don't have to pay for stretcher bars right away. If people wanted to find your artwork, where would they look? I have a personal website, www.austincaskey.com. That's A-U-S-T-I-N-C-A-S-K-I-E. You can also find me on Instagram. The posts on Instagram are a little more varied. It kind of ranges from just like studio practice shots to like um, finished images of the paintings. But I'm just at Austin Caskey. Okay, well, I'm going to include a link below. So if anybody is looking to see what else they can find. I think he also works on commission. Would I be right about that? Uh, yes, yes. Cool, okay. So Austin works on commission, but his work, as you can see behind him, is really, really cool. I just bought one of his paintings and it should be coming to me any day now. Thank you. Austin, thank you so much for this last minute. I appreciate it. I can't believe I caught you down in the studio. Oh, thank you so much for thinking of me. Okay, well, I love you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye, honey. Bye. <laughs> Julia Cameron goes on to say, there's no such thing as a time that is too late to begin a creative endeavor. I think we get stuck in our heads having left careers or occupations where we were the expert and moving on to doing something where we are clearly not the expert, we're totally new at this and not wanting to appear foolish. There's no way that you can enjoy something if you are constantly listening to your editor tell you to do it right. And that's the ego talking. That's the you that is not allowing you to be childlike in your pursuit. To clarify this, Julia Cameron goes on to say, our creativity does not diminish with age. Our creativity lives at least as long as we do. I would say much longer. It does take humility to begin a project, not knowing how or where the project will end. Nonetheless, it is worth it to begin. It is satisfying to create. It is satisfying to allow ourselves process. Do you remember when you were a little kid? I would go and make up musicals on the driveway with my best friend Mary Kay and we would present them to people and we would have people pay a quarter to see our made up musical which gosh could I'm sure it was interminable for my parents and neighbors who watched us but they came anyway and supported us. But that willingness to appear foolish and do something ridiculous in front of actual audience members that was fun. That was exciting. That created that heart-pounding sense of creation where you're not sure if it's going to work, but you do it anyway. I think you could do that now. You could feel that kind of childlike joy in trying something new and appearing foolish. 
I promise you, you won't regret it. You just won't. You are not done, no matter what age you are. You are not done creating. You're not done having fun. Even in the midst of a pandemic isolation from other people, you can still reach out and ask for help and create something new and learn new things. Many of us, with access to the internet, can actually look up things that people are doing that they have never done before because creativity is being ignited everywhere. It's really a matter of what you put your focus on and also not demanding perfection. That ego-driven demand for perfection, it's what keeps us from taking a step in any direction. If you paint something and it turns out horrible, set it aside and keep it as a reminder of where you started. Or if you want to toss it, that's fine too. Toss it and start again and Chalk it up as a learning experience, but don't let yourself get trapped into thinking that your first effort has to be good. Your first effort can be total crap, and if it's not total crap, then celebrate that. But if it is total crap, celebrate that because at least you started. You have to be able to let yourself start something in order to feel that joy. If you just sit around musing about it and criticizing others for their efforts, then you're not going to feel the joy that's possible with taking a chance on trying something that you wanted to try. There's an old saying that to make an omelet, you gotta break a few eggs. If you do anything in the kitchen, you know sometimes it's messy. It's part of the process. Be easy with yourself. Don't demand that the first thing has to be a model of perfection. Maybe you won't even show it to anybody, but if you do, show it with pride and say, look at what I did on my first try. Ernest Hemingway says, there is nothing noble in being superior to your fellow man. True nobility is being superior to your former self. That's pretty wise words. From Theodore Roosevelt we get, comparison is the thief of joy. So while you're on your journey, just acknowledge Backseat Betty's back there. Don't worry about it. She's going to be talking during your journey. Just ignore her if you can and say thank you for sharing. La, 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 la. I know that there's something that you want to do. It's out there. Pursue it. Now's the time. And now we need artists to express themselves more than ever. And if you are making art, you are an artist. What matters is the process and that you're out there doing something. Thanks for joining me again. Be sure and subscribe. Just remember, you are loved. You are cherished. And we're going to get through all of this together.